Hey guys, it's Liz and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys can probably tell that we're in a different location today. I thought I'd extend a little bit on the video that I posted last week about the exposure triangle. And I thought I'd just touch on long exposure and short exposure on this waterfall that's behind me, which is Edith Falls. So let's get started. So today we are out in Hazelbrook, which is about an hour's drive from where I live out in the Hawkesbury. And the waterfall that you can see behind me is called Edith Falls. So the entire walking track to get here was probably about 20 minutes. With that said, it did take me about an hour because obviously I was stopping every now and then to get some footage of the drone. So all up, it took me an hour to get down here, but um, I'm sure it'd take you guys about 20, 30 minutes. So it's a nice little spot. The track wasn't too hard to walk. There was a lot of rocks, so just make sure you don't slip. The hardest part of the track, however, is the track right behind you. It's really steep, but it's good because there's lots of trees that you can hold on to to kind of get down here. So that actually wasn't too bad. So like I said, I wanna show you guys the difference between long exposure and short exposure. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that with this waterfall. So what I mean by long exposure and short exposure is that long exposure is where, for example, if you're taking photos of water, it actually makes it look really smooth and kind of milky in a way. But if you use short exposure, which is like really quick snap, then it makes the water look nice and clear. So basically I'll show you the settings that I'm about to go through. Today's pretty cloudy, it's actually about to rain. So you'd probably wanna keep your ISO on 400 because it lets in more light. So essentially it creates the artificial light which we're after. In terms of the sharpness, I reckon F13 is pretty good. I will keep it at that, we can always change it. So we'll put it on one second and see what happens. One second, there we go. All right, just give me a second to frame my shot. The way I've decided to frame it as well is, I hope you guys can see that clearly because it looks pretty dark on my camera, is See over here, you got a really white spot because it's really cloudy, but the sky is really white, so there's no, there's really no color to it. It's gonna be hard to edit, so you kind of don't want too much of that in your composition. So it's probably best to focus on, I should see if we can move it down a bit more. There we go, that's a bit better. So what I've got going on is I've got the top of the waterfall over here, and then you've got the rocks where the water is running down, and then you've just got a couple of rocks either side with a nice little bush over there. I think that's a nice composition, so we'll take a shot with that and see what happens. So what I use to take these long exposures is this little Nikon remote here. You can get any kind of remote as long as it's universal and will actually work for your camera. So what I'm going to do to set that up is go over here, click on the remote setting. Now one thing to note is the sensor for this is actually at the front of the camera. So if you're going to point it at the back here, it's not going to work. You have to actually reach around to the front, make sure your hand doesn't go in front of the lens, but just Somewhere around here is where the sensor is and we'll be able to pick it up. So we'll take it off live view. Let's take the shot and see how it went. Okay, so you can see that's overexposed. So what we're gonna do now is just drop the exposure down. I might change it to, oh, sorry, I haven't used this camera in a little while. Let's drop it down to one. Let's see what happens there. So see how that's getting a little bit better. So what I reckon we'll do is maybe, because we can't drop the ISO any lower and the exposure's open to one second, we can actually close the f-stop to let in less light. So what we'll do is we'll go, probably go, yeah, f22, which I think is my max on this camera. So it's actually not a bad thing. It actually creates more detail within the rocks and stuff. So let's just give that another go. Yeah. Boom, there's your photo. So all it took was three shots before I eventually got the correct exposure. So that's what I'm talking about is there's no harm in going out and just practicing. So you put it on the settings that you think may work, you take the photo, realize it doesn't work, and you from there you know whether you need to increase the exposure, decrease the exposure, and three shots, and I pretty much got it. So pretty happy with that shot, I can't wait to see how it goes. Let's just take another photo for fun, just in case. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to put the exposure onto two seconds and see what happens there. Okay, so we'll try it again. So now this picture will probably be overexposed. So yeah, it is a little overexposed, but we can change that in post edit. Let's see if we can change it somehow. Will my 
F-stop. No, my F-stop won't go any higher. But yeah, so even, even on my scale, my scale is actually saying that it's overexposed. So what we can do is maybe let's just take it down to two. Let's go 1.3. So it's just open a little bit longer, which means it might be a little overexposed, but shouldn't be too bad. There you go. So now we're going to go to the other end of the scale. I want to show you guys how to make the water look really crisp, as in you'll see the finer details within the water and it'll be nice and sharp. So let's go all the way down to, oh, went the wrong way. So like I said in my previous video, I like to have it a 1-1000, one, 1-1000 one thousand. One, one thousand is nice and fast, so you really can't go wrong there. So now my scale is telling me that it's underexposed. So let's just change the exposure first to back to 400. Okay, so it's still saying that. Let's maybe take it up to 800 and see what happens there. Okay, so now let's maybe just put the shutter on, let's keep it on 500 and we'll change this. Hmm. I reckon F8, keep it on F8 because I feel like any lower, the finer details of the background will start to get blurry and I'd quite like for this whole shot to be sharp. So what we'll do is, I don't want to take my ISO any higher because it will start to get grainy. So maybe you'll see how far off we are. Okay, we're still a fair bit off. Let's take the ISO to 1600 and see what happens. It might come out grainy, may not. Let's just take the photo and see how it goes. So yeah, that's really quite dark but you can, you can hear that the shutter speed was really quick in there. I might have no choice but to open up the f-stop completely. So let's take a photo and see what happens. So yeah, so now it's perfectly exposed, but you'll find that maybe when I go back to post edit, it might be grainy. So that's one to kind of keep an eye out for. Ooh, the sun's coming out. Let's see if we can, yes. So the sun's just come out a little bit, so it might let me I have a feeling it might be too dark to show you guys a nice crisp waterfall because I'm worried that having it on 1500 might not be quick enough and that the water might not be crisp enough. So a little cheat is there's actually shutter priority on here. So you see your aperture priority, if I change it again, that's shutter priority. So basically it's telling me that, so if I want to put it, let's see how this goes, the subject is too dark. Hmm. So I might have to decrease this a little bit. So it's automatically doing it for me. That came out better. So putting it on shutter priority. So let's review the settings. So when I had it on 1 400, they recommended F4. So I actually wasn't too far off my settings. So this is always a good idea. The other thing I like to do also is if I'm trying to figure out what ISO I should have it on, put it on auto. So it's telling me that I need it on 800. And they're saying that I should have my f-stop open as much as possible with 1, 2, 50. So just for fun, let's take another photo and see what they recommend. So came out all right, but we'll have a look at that one as well. I think that sums it up. It's actually really fun coming down here, guys. So if you live nearby, I'd highly recommend coming down here. So you've got either falls behind me, like I just said before, but over just across Mabel Falls, which is probably another 20 minutes that way. And there's another one, but I can't quite recall the name. Definitely worth it. I recommend coming after a good rain though. We haven't had too much rain, but we have had rain. So I figured I'd still get a decent waterfall, which obviously I did. It's absolutely stunning. But I have seen photos where the water is just absolutely streaming, but today I'm still pretty proud of the results. I can't wait to get back home and start editing the videos and I'll show you guys how I edit it and what they look like afterwards. So yeah, I guess let's get back to the studio. Hey guys, and welcome back to the studio. So as you can see on my screen here, I've opened up the images that we took out at Edith Falls in Adobe Bridge. I've gone through and I've selected the best ones, which are the ones in red. Okay, so we've just opened them up in Camera Raw. So the first three images, I believe, are the ones where we will be practicing the slow exposure. So we'll edit these ones up. So for this one, it's a little slightly overexposed. So I'm just decreasing the exposure a little bit. The shadows, let's just see what they look like without shadows. 
about this same fine. The contrast I always like to bring up a little bit just because it makes things look a little more dense. Clarity, I love clarity in my photos, so I'll we'll bump that one up to 20. And then dehaze, so this is good if there's a little bit too much light. So if you have a look at the top corner where the white spot is, or even down in the water, see how when I go to the extreme it kind of just makes everything look a lot clearer. So we'll just add a bit of the haze on that one. So we'll make it 25. Vibrance, gotta love a little bit of vibrance. So I bring it up to 15. And I feel like there's maybe a little too many highlights in the water. So we're just gonna bump this down a fair bit. Let's see what it looks like at 50. The part where we were talking about when we're out at the waterfall was this white patch over here. So you've gotta watch that you don't over edit it, that you start to get a little, like these little glary parts over here where the color starts to change a little. Also another thing to mention, I totally forgot to change my camera settings to make these rules. Admittedly, the pictures probably won't edit as well because they actually edit better in RAW because there's more detail to play with but I can still edit them in JPEG, they just don't come out as amazing. But overall, I'm actually pretty happy with this photo, so we'll move on to the next one. So you can see a bit of a difference there if I just click between the pictures. So this photo was taken with a slightly long exposure of uh, 1.3 seconds. So we'll edit this one and see how it turned out. So this one came out a little bit brighter, so we'll drop down the exposure a bit. We'll up the vibrance to 20. Clarity, I like to so make that 20. Go to my contrast, chuck it in. Okay, so as you can see, the highlights in this one are still pretty prominent. So we're just going to drop that. So maybe, can we drop the exposure a bit more? Will that help? Yeah. Maybe bring up the shadows a bit. Yeah, okay, so bringing up the shadows has changed the picture. We'll probably keep it at 25. Let's compare the photo. So this one was the one that was taken at 1.3 seconds. So let's compare it to the one that was taken at one second. So as you can see, we've pretty much made them similar. To be honest, I actually think I prefer this one, the one that was taken at 1.3 seconds. So as you can see up here, there's, it's added a bit more light. Yeah, the overall photo just looks really nice. So now we're going to move on to the images that we took with a short exposure. So as you can see, if you zoom in a little bit, Oh, so the details lost apologies because it was taken in a JPEG. So basically you can see the individual drops of water have been taken. So if we were to go back to this image here, see how it's more streaky, whereas this one is starting to capture the individual dots. So that's the difference between long exposure and short exposure. All right, so this one's slightly overexposed, so we'll just drop it down a little, uh, bring the vibrance up, 20, clarity, 20. So as you guys can see, I pretty much use the same settings on every photo. Um, that's because over the years, I've pretty much developed my own style of editing and how I like my photos to look. You'll find the same for every photographer. Some people like a little bit of vineyard, a little bit darker. Some people like them nice and bright and highly exposed. So normally I have a preset where I just go into the settings and I load the setting into the photo and I just do the little tweaks where it needs more exposure, less exposure, more shadow, less shadow. But for today's example, I'm going to show you guys how I use each scale to get the desired result. So for this one, I just want to give it a bit of temperature just to make the leaves look really nice. Do I need some dehazing? Yeah. So brought the shadows up. Let's bring the highlights down. That's heaps better already. Okay, so as you can see, that's pretty much done. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you can even see down here the individual drops that have started to be captured. Again, I'm sorry they are in JPEG. <laughs> kicking myself here all right so let's move on to the last image this one was taken with a wider f-stop so we'll just quickly edit this one as well the exposure in this one's actually pretty good so i might leave that one to last we'll bring the contrast up vibrance up clarity up yeah we'll definitely bring the shadows up bring that one to about 30. drop the highlights and see how they go I think I've been having it on about 40 and it's been working well. Okay, so it looks like I'm starting to need a little bit more exposure. I'll just bring it up and then do I need some dehazing? Can't go wrong with dehazing. We'll put it on 15, we don't want too much. The shadows are still looking quite prominent, so I just want to lift them up a bit. Bring the highlights down. Yeah, I don't know if I'm a fan of this one. I think I maybe prefer the one before. Yeah, I prefer this one. Alright guys, so that's pretty much the editing of these photos done for today. I'm pretty happy with the end result, except for the fact that I shot them in JPEG instead of RAW, but 
they still came out pretty good regardless. I'd love to know what you guys think, so comment below which ones you liked, whether it was the long exposure or the short exposure. So there you have it guys, just a quick little video to show you what I mean by long exposure and short exposure. If you did have any questions on what I just showed you today, feel free to pop it in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. Or if I've missed quite a few things, I'll make another video. I'll take any excuse for another hiking trip.